All right, guys, so here's what we're doing today. We are visiting Mr. Hot Rod again, and he's going to update us on uh, his project he's got going. Uh, you've made some progress in the last month, haven't you? Yeah, we've, uh, we're, we're heading along the, down that road slowly. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, you, uh, you want to you walk us through what you've done? Because the car looks completely well, different. Okay. Well, uh, we, did get the, uh, we did get the front end put on. If you remember when we left off last time, the front end was sitting over there, and we were, we were uh, trying to get everything ready to set the front end on. Uh, one thing that uh, we were kind of pleasantly surprised about, if you remember, I was talking about the core support, which was a big U-shaped uh, piece. This is the, the top of it right here. The radiator sets in that core support, oh, nice. and, and the core support actually comes all the way down here. And if you remember, we were talking about the fact that uh, because this has a Camaro front clip on it, the front part of the frame, there was nothing down there to mount that core support on. So we had to uh, uh, build a uh, cross member. And the, the thing about the core support, everything on the front end, all the sheet metal, uh, depends upon where that core support mounts. Uh, to get it in the right place, we had to get it in the right place to get the fenders to line up, to get the, the hood, which we have had on, to line up, the grill to line up. Everything is dependent upon getting that core support in the right place. So we were real concerned, but apparently we got it in the right place, got the bumpers mounted, had to build uh, special bumper brackets, uh, uh, as a part of that whole core support thing, but it, 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 it turned out, I think it turned out okay. It looks like everything is, is pretty much uh, in the right place. Um, Where I'm at, well actually, here's, here's one thing that's kind of interesting maybe that, that I'm doing. I'm, right now, I'm trying to get ready to uh, put the front wheels on. The, the, uh, because everything, the front end on this vehicle sets so very low, uh, tire clearance in the fender becomes an issue, particularly if you have tires that are a little bit wide. So I'm using a tool right now to roll the inside of this. Uh, the, the, as the fender comes down, it, it has a, a, a curve or a lip on it. And what I'm trying to do is roll this lip in tight to increase the, uh, the clearance between the, the side of the fender and the, uh, uh, and, and the tire. Wow. So hopefully the next time, if we do this again, hopefully I'll have the tire, the front tires on. Uh, we how, have to finish up one thing here. How how oh. how much can your uh, about a half an inch? Half about an inch. all you can gain. Okay. But uh, it's we're kind of at the point where half an inch is any, anything you can get. Yeah. Is is, is, is helpful. That's cool. <laughs> uh, I do have something out. I'll show you here in just a second. Uh, that we just finished up uh, yesterday. Uh, when we put this transmission and the engine with the bell housing, of course, everything is different than the original, so we had to cut all the floorboard out. And Gene used some of his uh, fabrication skills. And let me, I'll get the piece here that he just, yeah. that he made yesterday. This is a transmission tunnel. It's, uh, it, it looks pretty simple. But if you, the more you look at it, the more you'll realize the number of compound curves and, try, and trying to build all of this, make all of these compound curves and have it flanged so that it'll actually bolt up to the firewall. It was, it was quite a trick. Let's just see if it fits. I think it will. Pretty sure it will. It did the other day. There it is. Oh, that looks nice. Yeah, I, I, I thought he did a good job on that. So. That fits like a glove. Yeah, well, that, that, I tell you what, he, uh, he put a lot of work and a lot of thought into that one. Did he? Uh-huh, yeah, trying to, trying to make all of this. See, you've got, you've got an angle here to deal with. Yep. You've got a curve this way. You've got, this has to intersect, and it has to intersect at a certain point because we wanted, we wanted this to be at a certain height on our shift lever here, so there was yeah. a lot of work went into it. I thought he did a real good job on it. I remember in the previous uh, time I was here filming, you told me that that, that was on your mind, like thinking about like doing uh -huh. that. Yeah. That, that was going to be a troublesome spot. But it is, To yeah. see it done, it looks really clean. I, yeah, I thought he did, did real well on that. Yeah. Probably our next 
Probably the next big thing we're going to do is uh, set the rear end. Now this is the rear end uh, here again. We're, we're, we're mismatching a lot of parts. This rear end actually came out of the Pontiac Firebird. And it's just, it's just setting in here. It's not really secured. Uh, what we have to do is pitch this, this uh, input shaft here, which is, is the pinion shaft, has to be pitched up. And it needs to be at an angle of about anywhere from three to five degrees. And when we get it pitched up at that angle, then we will weld this spring mount to the axle tube to secure it in that position. And the reason that's important, then we can, uh, then we can go ahead and build a drive shaft. But the reason that that angle is important is the fact that if you look at the engine, the engine is actually pitched down. Most people don't realize this. You think your engine's setting level, but it really isn't. Uh, it's not real noticeable on this engine, but if you look, I, I'm sure it won't show up in the video, but if you look carefully, you can see that from here to here is a shorter distance than from here to here. If this was a four barrel carburetor with a big base, it would be very obvious. This distance back here would be much greater than the distance here. And that's because the, the gas in the, in the float bowl has to set level. This, this, this bowl will be filled with gas and it has to be level even though the engine itself has to be pitched down like this. And the reason that, it's, that, it, that they do that is you do not, on any kind of equipment, whether it's a car, whether it's a stationary engine or whatever, you do not want your drive shaft running straight. You want your drive shaft to actually do a kind of a controlled wobble. There's a universal joint at each end of your drive shaft, and you want those that, those those drive shafts to work. Otherwise, uh, it'll, if if they stay in one position, they'll wear out those U-joints very quickly. So you end up with a three degree down here, three degree up in the back, and you have a controlled wobble in your drive shaft. And so that's that's kind of where we're at right now. Is, uh, I think that's going to be our next project is trying to get the rear end located in the uh, in the right place. Love it. So Con that's kind of where we're at. That's awesome. Controlled wobble. Controlled wobble. <laughs> <laughs>